Karamea on the west coast has a bit of a local secret. When the tide is low enough at the mouth of Little Wanganui River, an ancient whale fossil is revealed. I've taken my kids there, I've taken my grandkids there. We all had a look at it and talked about the monster <laughs> in the rocks. We always called it the monster, it wasn't, you know... It wasn't a whale to the kids, it was a monster. But on Sunday, 23 million years after the fossil was created, locals were roused by the sound of metal cutting into rock. A group of people were in the middle of removing the fossil. When we landed, one of the fellows came very quickly and looked quite aggressive towards us with a steel chisel in his hand. So we just said, hey, we haven't come to fight, we've come to talk about it. And then the other fellow said, well, he had permission from the local iwi, so we couldn't really fight that, and on a Sunday, we couldn't get any information from anyone, so we just sort of left it alone. And then we seen them taking the stone away. The resident Facebook groups are running hot with speculation. Who were they? The talk is that the fossil thieves were private collectors, but everyone is ticked off. I just feel gutted, really. I think it's something that should have been left alone. Everyone is that I've talked to in the hour and probably 30 or 40 people now, they're all a wee bit brassed off. It, it, should, it, should be, it shouldn't be touched. No one seems sure if this is legal or not. Fossils fall under the Protected Objects Act 1975, which controls the export of these objects but doesn't control their collection or removal, says Jacob Fleming from DOC. The Department of Conservation, West Coast Regional Council and police are all investigating, but Tom reckons he knows what he'd like to see happen. I don't care about prosecutions or anything like that. I just like to see the whalebone come back to, to Karamea for our museum or, you know, in, in a special place in Karamea. What is going on here? We're joined by amateur fossil hunter Mornay. Before we start, Mornay, we should make it clear you're not one of the guys who took the fossil, right? <laughs> No, um, I didn't remove any uh, whale fossils on the West Coast. You must admit, what happened on the West Coast seems pretty bloody brazen. Um, look, uh, I've never <laughs> used power tools to remove a fossil. If I find a fossil in situ like that, I will notify the museum and let them have a look at it. Uh, but yeah, I can see it's really upsetting and yeah, I, I really sympathise with the people from that community. Um, it's not great li uh, losing a treasure like that. Part of the problem here, do you think, that the community felt like they really owned that fossil, it belonged to them, but in law it seems like fossils belong to no one. Um, I, I kind of see it like fossils in New Zealand belong to the people of New Zealand. Um, and I don't know what the way to protect them is at this point. Uh, if it's not governed by law, you're relying on uh, the goodwill of people. And, you know, there's a wide spectrum of uh, collectors, fossil collectors, as you've got a wide spectrum in any part of society. So you're going to have people that have a diff different understanding of what they feel is ethical. Mona, it seems weird because it's not illegal to take something like this. To me, it seems a little bit immoral. So would you have a message to the guys who took that fossil? Uh, yeah, I would say work together with the community, see if you can get that fossil either put back where it was or maybe put in a local museum where everyone, everyone can enjoy it. And Monet, if there are people watching that want to do a little bit of fossil hunting the right way, um, any easy tips if they head out somewhere this weekend? So don't go on private land and don't go chipping out little bits of bone out of the cliff. Uh, try and find nice fossils that have rolled out of the cliff and take those home. And if you find something that's not a crab or a shell or a shark tooth, uh, let your local museum know. And Mornay, thanks so much for your expertise tonight. Thanks, nice, pleasure. Hey, kia ora, New Zealand. Welcome along to the project. Look, Justine Smith is here. I just want to clarify something from our story. Tom said that he thought that maybe the people had permission from the local iwi, and, I mean, if I heard that from someone, I'd be like, oh, OK, sweet as. Mm -hmm. But according to a spokesperson from Ngāti Waiwai, they told staff that mm, they didn't grant any permission. So if you were these fellas and this fales out there who have taken this piece of rock, shame on you. That's not yours. You know it's not yours. And nothing good 
comes to people who steal tongue like this. Mm -hmm. The people of Karamea are watching, the Tupuna are watching, and nothing good is going to happen until you bring it back. I should say, by the way, it's not a mystery who these people are. They know who they are, but there are just no laws that seem to be able to get enforced. And so everyone's feeling pretty helpless from the iwi to the district council to DOC. Everyone's like, not much we can do. I'm still going to embrace this. I like to look positive side of this. Uh, if I ever go to Karamea with my kids, I'm going to go, uh, let's go down and see the hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you've got the whole story behind it now. You've got to protect your fossils. I mean, what if someone came here and stole Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good, mate. We can't give him away. <laughs> We've tried going on with a saw and everything. He keeps turning up. Yeah, you've got to ask lo local iwi first, mate. <laughs>